Good evening, good day, good afternoon for everybody who's joining on the live. Thank you so much for being here. It is an absolute pleasure, absolute privilege and honor to be here. Thank you so much, Erez Safar, for putting this together, the Light of Infinite Festival. Um, I feel really humbled to be here um, amongst so many incredible special humans and souls sharing so much wisdom and light in this world and um, for all the work you've done to create this. Thank you so much. Nice to meet everyone. My name is Alexa Eden. I am an urban wellness consultant and marketing strategist um, located currently in New York, but most of the time I'm traveling around the world. Um, and this evening we're going to be talking about technology, spirituality, and the future of humanity. So a few of these topics are my favorite. I'll introduce a little bit about how I ended up with such a deep desire to bring this wisdom into the world. Um, tell a little bit of a background as to how it's evolved over the last many years, uh, and then paint a picture for where we're going in the future. So if you're just joining, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here, and I will go ahead and get started. So I'm originally from New York. I grew up in the suburbs of New York with a lot of trees and birds and space. And then over the years, once I made my way to New York City, I noticed a drastic shift in the way that um, uh, that urban dwellers live their lives. So when we're surrounded with so many people, we often forget just how human we really are. And um, once I started working and living in Manhattan, surrounded by people all the time, I started to lose my sensitivity to the other person around me. So. Flashback to about 2016, I was working at a very high fast, high paced, fast pressure sales company and the hustle was heading on. Um, I spent most of my days typing away at a computer, answering messages, spending time on Instagram and social media just to get new leads in business. And at a certain point, I, I felt like it wasn't the most sustainable. So riding the subway back and forth to work every day, I started looking around and noticing that in the darkest place of New York, underground on the subway, that's where some of the brightest light needed to be introduced. So I would look around and I would see a, a complete lack of connection, not just with each other, not just with the you know your peers and neighbors that you're riding the subway with, but with themselves. I felt that there was a huge disconnection of people riding to and from work, but completely plugged into their phones, playing games, scrolling on social media, and really losing sight of who they are in the world. Um, so this started opening up a conversation in my own mind and heart, which was, what do people really want? What are they really looking for? Um, and uh, And once I started looking around, I realized there's an opportunity here in the way that we spend our time. And unfortunately, we're giving so much of that away uh, just because of technology. So I started thinking about what what does the city need? What do human beings need in the world like today? And the, the, the word that came up for me was empathy. How do we create more empathy in our lives? Well, empathy is the most human trait that we can have. It's the ability to to, to feel not just ourselves, but to feel another person. So as I'm riding the subway, I'm looking around, I'm seeing all these disconnected souls, so many people completely losing sight of what it means to truly be human. And so I said, what can we do to introduce a deeper sense of awareness? My biggest fear at this time was riding the subway every day and realizing that we are, are going to have an entire generation's generation of human beings that have no sense of empathy. Because if we're constantly looking down like this in our own world, completely lo losing sight of what's around us feeling, we're not gonna be able to really build a strong infrastructure for the future. So this is back in 2016. We've obviously seen a, a massive shift in the way that technology has been integrated into our lives. But I think that was kind of the made seed that planted this whole evolution of what's the balance between a technology first, technology centered reality and a human conscious state of being? Where do we find that balance and how do we make that happen? So I've made it a point within the last seven, eight years of my life 
to really focus on striking a balance between technology and slow conscious living. So it's been an incredible unfolding of awarenesses, teachings, practices, stumblings, connections, communities, um, events, and discussions around this topic of finding that middle ground. And as Jews, we have such a beautiful blueprint of what that balance could look like, but I'm here to challenge it even more and give us even more tools and more awareness and more practices to deepen that power that we have within. So that's a little bit of an introduction. I gave you a lot of little pieces in throughout of, of themes and topics that we'll be kind of uncovering this evening. Um, but first I would, I would, I would have us all kind of take a moment and almost if you feel comfortable, I find it to be helpful. Close your eyes for a moment and, and take a seat into the, your thinking and say, how does technology help you get your job done or help you get your day-to-day -day tasks done? And follow that question with, how does it get in the way of the way that I want to be living my life? And I think this is where we can start this evening. Because there's no denying that there's an incredible power that technology has provided us in allowing us to open new worlds, new connections, new access, new wisdoms, new understandings. And at the same time, it's completely um, preyed on our, uh, our abilities as humans to focus our attention. And I think it's a really important question to ask if you are on a journey of discovering how technology is going to ultimately help the development of who you are and might hinder the development of who you are. So if you have a pen and paper, I'd write that question down just to get started and we'll reference it a few times. So to get started, I would ask again, how does technology help you get your job or your life tasks done? And how does it hinder your ability to get your life tasks done? So typically from this point, I would create two buckets on either side and start to write down the ways that it helps and the ways that it hinders. And then you can kind of explore that later. So I think one of the most challenging things when it comes to technology is that it was introduced to our society in such a way that at first it was really exciting. And the more they refined the technology, not just the hardware of it become it going from a huge desktop computer to a smaller personal commute computer to a laptop to a phone now a watch now virtual assistants we have the whole spectrum of technology and its evolution into its integration into our lives um, but it happens so seamlessly and because it happens so seamlessly and so quickly we as humans really gave so much of our power away to technology on the earlier side so you know if we think about what is the world going to look like in 5 10 15 years it's really important that we start utilizing our consciousness our human capabilities of asking these questions and the foreground so that way 15 years down the road when technology is completely integrated into our lives, our households, our cars, our cities, we have way more ability to choose what is right for us, what's gonna help us, and what's harming us at the same time. So I'm throwing a lot of content and information out right now, but it's mainly because it's such a big topic and I think it speaks to everybody in different areas of their lives. So for example, if a 17 year old girl was listening to my conversation right now, she might say she spends X amount of hours on TikTok a day. Now, if a 25 year old male has this conversation happening, they may have a different reaction to the way that they're interacting with technology. And a 60 year old for sure has a different relationship with technology. So I do think it's important to really lay out all of the challenges that we face as a society and as a population and and to take the time to reflect on our own lives 
what is it that we're personally struggling with? And I think if we can ask ourselves those questions, that's when we can develop a real strategy on how to move forward. And that's my goal. Um, so as I talk about these topics, I'll just share now, I'm a public speaker. I'm a host of panels and podcasts and events. And I also do tech audits for people who are interested in doing a deeper dive into the way that they use technology, how they want it to work for them, how it's getting in the way of their peace, and ultimately creating really sustainable and substantial practices that they can move forward with and feel good about. So if you're interested in learning any like more about any of those offerings, I'm happy to share more info um, and my information so you can follow up with me. But I'm just going to put that there so you know. Now, let's bring ourselves back to that initial question. We know that technology helps us, and we also know that it gets in our way. But the, but the question underneath that is, what's the big deal? I think the problem today is that so many people walk around celebrating their vices. Oh, I binge watched this show. Oh, oh I, I'm addicted to this platform. Oh, I spend X amount of hours doing this. Now, depending what world you're in, if you're a secular Jewish person, if you're not Jewish, if you're a religious Jewish person, in some way or another, technology is in, influ influencing our lives. So the question we wanna ask ourselves is how do we want to have a relationship with technology? And then also what type of relationship do we want to give forth to our children and to our kids? And that's one of the main things that inspired me early, early on in, in terms of this research and getting into this topic, which was if I don't have sustainable practices around my technology habits, how can I envision handing those off to my children? So if I don't feel comfortable sitting at a table enjoying a meal or enjoying food or having a conversation with someone, how will I be able to give those tools and those practices and, uh, and awarenesses to my children? So many years ago when I picked up this, this topic of study, these were the main questions I was asking. I was, I was thinking in 15 years, the way the technology is gonna exist in our lives is gonna be so different. My five-year-old is not gonna know the difference between barking orders and commands at the Alexa or speaking kindly to the neighbor and asking them to share a toy. So it's really important to realize that the way that we are training ourselves to interact with technology will ultimately lay the foundation and the groundwork for how we will train our future children and our future generations to interact with their world. I'm going to let that sit in for a second while I have a sip of water. Oftentimes, people will ask me if I'm pro-technology or if I'm anti-technology. And I'm neither. I would say that my philosophy and my focus in life and in this work is I'm pro-human. I'm pro-human intelligence and human evolution. So what that means is that empathy piece I was talking about, that creativity, um, that intuition, those elements of self that only humans have, that's what I fight for. And the beauty in that is that all of us have those within us innately. So yes, we can train them. Yes, we can become better at feeling empathetic for others, practicing creativity, tuning into our intuition. Yes. And at the same time, it's not anything that technology will be able to take from us. As well as they're being trained, they're only as good as we are able to train them. So a, a big part of my work in this world, I believe, is helping humans realize their intelligence. And the more that a human realizes their intelligence, the more they can input into technology and actually work with technology instead of giving away their power to technology. So Shabbat 
I find is one of the most powerful, intuitive, and positive tools that we can start to practice and adopt into our lives, regardless of where we're holding as a Jew, and even as a non-Jew, we can start to think about, you know, that feeling of turning off your phone or that phone being dead um, and running out of battery for five minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. Now multiply that by 25 hours every single week. You're giving your body and yourself and your soul so much space to actually calibrate to the natural existence of who it is without any outside influence. So when we really step away from the man-made technical world, we really give ourselves a lot of that space to become who we're meant to be. And the more we do that, the more clarity we have, and the more powerful we can be in moving towards that future we want to see. So these are all incredibly important elements in considering where we are today and where we want to go not just as individuals, not just as parents, and not just as a community of Jews, but as a whole entire collective of human beings. It's so imperative that we consider how our choices with technology today are making a difference for the future. So we have almost an entire generation of young minds that are spending about eight to 12 hours a day on social media platforms, namely Instagram and namely TikTok. So I think it's important that we ask ourselves, how much longer do we wanna ignore the immense amount of impact and power that technology has on our lives. How much longer do we want to celebrate our technology addictions? How much longer do we want to sit mindlessly giving away our attention, giving away our behavior, giving away our thoughts? and our ability to choose. When we break it down like that, I think it becomes a lot more real. And I think it becomes a lot more sobering of a process. And it makes us question how our choices today really matter. And a lot of the times I find that when I'm having conversations with people, there is a dissonance around, yeah, but I need this. and. Like I said, I'm not anti-technology, I'm very pro. But the question is, to what extent and to what degree are we willing to give up our innate human capabilities and our innate powers to the force of technology? I do believe that there is a massive rectification in the technology we have today. I deeply believe that the way in which technology has been brought into the world and it's been developed over the many years is here for all of us to toil with. And I'm excited to continue to see that happen. It's not going anywhere, but it's a matter of whether we're gonna rise to the occasion. If we're gonna to rise to what's being requested of us as human beings. So I'm gonna use the last few minutes to get practical because I know everybody likes practicality. In the same way that Jews believe that our spiritual work is both upper worldly and lower worldly. We're in the spiritual realms and we're in the physical realm at the same time. I believe that it's really 
it's really important to think about the long-term picture and the big picture of technology and where it is today. And so bring it into our lives and, and ask ourselves, in which ways can we shift our behaviors around the, a way, around the way that we approach it, around the way that we utilize it, around the way that we rely on it? So asking ourselves the question of, what platform is my most challenging platform? For some, it could be email. For others, it could be pornography. For others, it could be social media. But if we really ask ourselves that question, what is the thing that brings up the most challenge for me? Identify it for what it is. And once you can identify it and isolate it from the other elements, that's where you can start to work around creating real structures around that habit. So as I started personally developing this work in my own life, there were, there were certain times and moments where I removed myself from tech. Now, whether it was a week at a time where I completely didn't turn on my cell phone and only used a landline and work email, or taking an entire day off for Shabbat, or choosing not to use it during meal times, or on the subway, or when I'm walking. There's so many moments and opportunities, and what I like to call micro moments in our lives, that we can completely step away from technology and allow ourselves to recalibrate as humans. So I would first ask, like, what is that challenging app for you? And once you identify what that app is, the following question would say, at what times do you find yourself most weak around that platform? And then even deeper than that, I would ask, what emotional state are you in when you choose to reach for that platform? So first to identify the platform, then when are you using that platform? Noticing it. And lastly, what emotional state are you in when you're reaching for that platform? Now you might not have the answers right away because these are new questions, but as you start to let these questions percolate in your world and in your reality, you'll start to notice a pattern. And when you notice that pattern, that's the exact place where you get to re regain your power. So let's just say, for example, um, late 40 man, hard worker, addicted to email, constantly checking, refreshing email, always looking, when is he gonna, is there something that he missed? He's gotta be on all the time. Now email would be the identifiable challenging platform. The question is, when does he find himself most reaching for it? Probably in the morning, maybe before bed. Now, that might not seem like such a problem, but if we identify, how is that platform getting in the way? Is it stressing him out first thing in the morning? Is it taking him away from his family? Is he not allowing him to be present in interactions? Is he tired or overwhelmed or is he working other people too hard? There's a ton of things that could be manifesting based on the way that he's relating to that specific tool. So once we give ourselves the space to actually identify what's happening here and at what time is he finding himself there, then we can go deeper and say, okay, so now what are the emotional elements that are happening? Now, for, for this particular instance, it could be that first thing in the morning, that energy, the energy stress filled with chemicals of like, got to get the day started. That could be what's fueling him. And that might be a chemical ex interaction that he's enjoying. It could be a high. Is it what he needs? Most times I think people walk through the world with high anxiety because they're not actually addressing the deeper element of what's causing that anxiety. So not tuning into yourself, not taking a break, not breathing, not meditating, not recalibrating your soul self. All of those things can lead to an anxious lifestyle. So of course it's gonna look different for everybody, um, but I did wanna paint the picture of what an example could look like if we were to 
kind of dissect those elements of what, how to relate to certain platforms and technology usage in your own personal way. Um, I'll share an, a, a, a short anecdote. When I started getting into marketing and social media promotion, um, I realized that I was going to have to be using technology a lot. Now, before I decided to jump into Instagram and just become an influencer, I first pulled myself back and asked myself some real questions. I said, what is it that I want to use this platform for? Coming up with that intention prior to beginning any sort of project is huge. So when I asked myself that question, I, I, I was able to identify, I want to use this platform to make a difference. And I want to be able to share meaningful content on the platform. So anytime I approached that platform and I wasn't doing those things, it bumped up against that initial commitment. So if you want to reframe your technology commitments, you can ask, what is the platform at hand? What do I want to use it for? And how does it get in my way? What are my weakest times using it? And how can I create a stronger structure around that? And then what are the emotions that I'm feeling when I typically reach for that? And can I support myself in other ways rather than reaching for the technology? So there's so much here, but I do want to leave us with something. With Hashem's help, we will be able to find the middle ground and the balance between an accelerated technology reality and a slow, conscious, connected world. And when we give ourselves that space to explore the in-between, I think that's where the true essence of ourselves is really going to be able to come out. Because just like we know being at the top of a mountain meditating completely dis, dis, unattached from the world and disassociated from the world might help in certain moments in time to get in touch with that true soul self. We all know and understand that in order to make a real difference in this world, as long as we are here as humans in human form and human bodies, we are expected to work with the physical tools that we have in front of us. So the practice of striking a balance between these two worlds is, I believe, exactly where we're going to be able to come forth as who we're really meant to be in this world. And then the more we do that, the more we create space for future generations to do that below us. So my main focus and desire for, you know, the next X amount of years that I have the, you know, blessing and capability of sharing information on this is to to really empower people to recognize that they actually are in control of the way that they interact with the physical world around them that they are in control of the way that they utilize technology and that they are in control of the way that their soul self has space to express itself in the world um i want to say thank you again uh, to Erez Safar for putting this together, for all the beautiful work you've done in the world. I think you've been an incredible mover and shaker. You've paved the way for many people to step into their power, step into their voice. Um, so again, I want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, I am active online, ironically. Um, my first name, Alexa, like the Amazon Alexa. Eden, like the garden. And um, we're all about finding the balance between tech and slow living. So you'll find me somewhere in the balance of both. Um, I am active online. I also host a lot of events in person. I do speaking engagements, podcasts, um, and I'm really passionate about bringing this insight, awareness, information, and practices to as many people as possible. Um, I am focusing on a younger demographic, a younger age, high schoolers and young adults to really help them as they are you know, digital um, I forget what they're called right now, uh, but they grew up with phones in their hands. So um, I do think that it's an important demographic to look at. 
And um, if you have any questions, you can follow me uh, or find me online, www.alexaeden.com. Thank you so much for joining the conversation tonight and enjoy the rest of the speakers.